Amin Reina here from Sage Investors, and I'm here to do a quick mind map analysis uh, to look at the impact of what falling interest rates would have on bond, bond prices. Uh, we're hearing a lot of talk and a lot of chatter going on in the, mar in, uh, in the markets these days about interest rates falling, and there seems to be a lot of catalysts for uh, the interest rates to uh, fall. We're looking at essentially what drives attention, tends to drive interest rates lower are uh, signs of a slowing economy. And that's usually, you know, things like falling jobs, people, jobs not being created as much, uh, decreased investment, and decreased trade. And it seems like that these elements are all coming into play. Uh, just the most recent U.S. jobs report showed that uh, less than a hundred thousand job, less than a hundred thousand new jobs were created, and that previous month's adjustments of the job level creation and amounts were were adjusted downwards. We're seeing uh, the rate of investment. Uh, that companies are making is falling and a lot of it has to do with a lot of the trade trash talking that's going on right now um, that's happening between China and Mexico and Canada and all this stuff going on in Europe there's a lot of trade trash talking going around and that is impacting growth and when that happens what we're seeing now is um, the Federal Reserve which was at the start of last year, last uh, end of 2018, pretty much full in on a increasing interest rates policy, is looking like they're signaling that rates, interest rates, are going to fall. So what does that mean? Um, as an investor, let's say if I'm an investor, I'm looking to put my part of my portfolio into fixed income, into bonds. What would the impact of falling interest rates have on my equity component? My fixed income portion of my portfolio and what should I be thinking of um, going forward uh, in terms of making in types of investment decisions that I might want to consider um, for my portfolio going forward if interest rates are definitely looking like they're going to be falling. So the easiest way to, for me to kind of explain it or I, for me to understand it is to kind of almost kind of do a, a time map of, uh, of things. If you were to look at right now today, let's just say today for, for whatever reason, you look out and you want to go buy bonds um, and let's say the interest rates out there would be 5%. If you bought a bond, it would pay you interest coupon rate of uh, 5%. But let's say what ha if we go forward and yeah, indeed, um, all of these elements happen that results in the uh, Federal Reserve cutting rates and interest rates begin to fall. What that means is, you know, um, you know that day that it happens, like let's just say, you know, T plus five, let's say it happens like five weeks from now, um, interest rates start dropping. So it means five weeks from now, if companies were going to issue bonds, they were going to be issuing them probably at a lower interest rate. There'd be a lower coupon rate. So chances are, let's just say for simplicity's sake, that five weeks from now, uh, company X wanted to issue a bond. Um, the based on the fact that interest rates have been falling, were falling or going to fall, and they want to sell these bonds and be competitive, the, they would have to sell their bonds at a lower interest rate. So let's just say, for example, it would be four percent. So what does that mean? If I'm an investor now, like put it now, I'm going to be wearing the hat of an investor. If I'm going out looking in the market and say, hey, I want to go out and buy a bunch of bonds, which bonds are you going to buy? You're going to buy bonds. Which bonds are you going to be more interested in? You're going to buy bonds that are going to give you a higher yield. They're going to give you uh, pay a higher interest rate, right? So if you had to face a choice, all things being equal, would you buy the 4% bond or would you buy the 5% bond? Well, chances are, you're gonna probably wanna buy the 5% one because it pays you more. So what's gonna happen is that these five per, the older bonds with higher coupon rates are gonna be worth more. Which means there's gonna be a greater demand for those Greater demand, which means they're going to be 
priced at a higher rate, which means the chances are they're going to be worth more and they also have a higher uh, possible probability, likelihood of you can generate a capital gain by selling those bonds before they mature. So that's the impact right now. Is if interest rates do fall, that means bonds that are currently issued in the marketplace are going to be worth more. They're going to increase in price because obviously they're paying a higher coupon and, and potentially a higher yield. And so you're going to gravitate, investors are going to gravitate to own to those already previously issued bonds more than they're going to want to be buying the, the current ones that are going to just come out in that place. Now, I'm saying all things being equal, there's other factors that go into the price of bonds, but I'm not going to get into it. I'm just trying to keep this at a very simple baseline understanding for most people. So that's one element is that older bonds are going to be worth more. So that leads to the next concept, which is the change, the rate of change in the price of bonds. Now, what happens is um, when bond, when interest rates fluctuate, the places where they, that 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 change um, impacts more is in bonds that have longer maturities, long-term bonds. So, the rate of price changes in bonds is more sensitive in bonds with a high term maturities. That's just another fancy schmancy way of saying long term bonds. So therefore, what, uh, what this means is that falling interest rates would, would increase the price of long-term bonds faster than short-term bonds. When I'm talking about bonds like you know three months, six months, one year kind of things, bonds that have maturities of five years, 10 years, 20, 30 plus years, the price changes in those uh, type bonds, if interest rates were to fall, would be much higher. You get a quicker, bigger bang for the buck. So what does that mean for us as investors? If you're an investor looking to have, you know, you want to have a exposure to, to, to fixed income, to bonds in your portfolio as part of a, a, full, a nicely diversified portfolio and you wanted to get into bonds, what kind of bonds would you buy? Well, you could have a nice diversified portfolio of short-term, medium-term, long-term bonds, which is a very reasonable way to do it. But if you're looking for the quickest bang for the buck, if you're looking where the biggest appreciation potentially could be, you would want to own uh, a basket or a portfolio of, of long-term bonds. So you know you're talking about you know 10-year plus you know 30-year 30 30-year 30 bonds. Those are type of areas that are going to be are going to be much more sensitive to the changes and the fluctuations of interest rates um, in the run, and that's kind of makes sense. When interest rates go down, you kind of want to own more longer duration, longer term bonds. When interest rates are going up, you want to stay closer to the shorter maturities because uh, the sensitivity for those short term maturities is not as great as as, as they are further out uh, in the maturity cycle when you're going along the the year old yield yield curve. So that's really what I wanted to just share with you is in terms of a takeaway is um, interest rates are going to fall. And if interest rates fall, then that, what that means is bonds that are currently out in the marketplace that are trading and are active are going to be worth more than the any bonds that are going to come out once interest rates fall. And so if you're making that decision of whether what kind of bonds, so that's the first kind of takeaway. The second takeaway is sensitivity of bond prices and uh, two interest rates is more sensitive uh, for higher maturity, longer term maturity bonds. And so if you're looking to make an investment decision to build some exposure in, in bonds in your portfolio, you might wanna at least while we live, while the interest rate cycle is tr continues to trend downward, having more exposure in terms of uh, longer maturity uh, bonds because that's there's potential for greater price appreciation all things being equal. There's other factors that go into bond prices, but I'm just trying to keep this at a simple baseline uh, level, baseline principle for you to for you to kind of start your analysis with. 
So if you have any uh, other questions, uh, I do uh, do other, uh, if you want to check out any of my other uh, mind map videos, you can check them out on my website, sageinvestors.ca. Uh, this video also will be, uh, you can also find this video in podcast format. You can just get the audio version of this podcast. You can uh, listen to it, download it through my website, sageinvestors.ca, as well as through Apple Podcasts. So thanks for listening in. Thanks for watching. This has been another mind map analysis of uh, the impact of falling interest rates on bonds. Uh, thanks for listening and thanks for watching in. My name is Amin Reina of Sage Investors and we'll catch you again another time. Take care. Bye bye.